My wife and I were watching it a while back and sitting there watching and watching Jesus do things. And here's the thing. Okay. I cannot tell you how blessed I am. I was sitting there watching Jesus heal the leper, heal the blind man. I'm watching him do these things. I'm sitting there and I'm, you know, reaching for the remote. It's like, we got to pause. We got to pause. And because we do that a lot. If I'm watching something and there's a preaching moment, I'll pause and preach to my wife. Okay. (laughs) She's a captive audience. All right. <clears throat> She'd been captive 45 years now, as a matter of fact. So I'll tell you that. So <clears throat> that's how long we've been married this year. And so she, um, we were sitting there, and she said, "What's going on?" And I'm, and I'm sitting there, and she looks over, and she goes, "Are you crying?" And yes, I was crying. I was a, I'm a big baby when it comes to that. When it comes to devils, I like to roar like a lion against them. But I'm telling you, whenever I see Jesus working, I cry like a baby. <laughs> Why? Because I told her, I, I'm sitting there, and, I'm, you know, and she said, well, you know, what's going on? I'm like, I've seen Jesus do that. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've watched him heal lepers. I've watched him. Give it. We were in, and I, I don't have the picture. Maybe we'll have them by Sunday. Maybe we could show them. Uh, we got video. We got all kinds of stuff. But we were in uh, Still Fontaine in, in, in South Africa. And uh, the uh, pastor there asked me to preach. And I said, yes. And he said, now, because uh, the service usually lasts three, four hours. And so he said, at some point, uh, there's a man coming. They've turned him out of the hospital. He's going to die. He has HIV, and he's going to die. And, but they, they won't do anything for him at the hospital anymore. And they said, well, uh, as soon as he gets here, even if you're preaching, please stop and pray for this man. And I said, absolutely, whatever. Just you know, let me know he's here. So I'm going on, and I preach about two hours. And then we have a healing line, and we're going through, and it's amazing what we're seeing God do. And then finally they said, the man is over here. And so I went around these huge pillars, and there was a man on a pallet, covered with a blanket. His mother was standing behind him, and he looked dead. I mean, skin and bones, more bones than skin even. I mean, just, it looked bad. And I honestly, I thought he might be dead. And I walked over to him, and I was going to pray, And instead, I got down on my knees, put my hands on him, commanded life, commanded him to live, and then I got up and then touched him with my foot. I did not kick him. I did not kick him. I touched him with my foot, very gently. I don't ever do it. I don't know if I've ever done that since either. And the mother took the blanket and pulled it off of him. And this was the first sign of life. This man turned over. I mean, just skin and bone. And then he, I step back, and he step, starts to get up, and he turns around and just walks off, completely healed. He walked around for about two more hours. They interviewed him, videotaped it, and after two hours of walking around, had gained 20 kilos wow. of weight in two hours. Now, that's not a gift everybody wants, but <laughs> <clears throat> for him, it was a good thing. And I watched him walk off. And then somebody was there with a camera, so they got pictures of all of it and then other things going on. But I'm remembering seeing these things. See, someday, see, they got all these neat gadgets they're coming out with. I'm waiting for the one that's like a helmet that you can put on and it touch it. And then you can remember things and it'll project it onto a screen. Because I'm, I'm telling you, if, once that comes out, I will have one. Why? Because I want you to see what I've seen. Because we have seen every part of the human body healed. Every part. We have seen every kind of disease healed. The first time I was over in South Africa, there were, and this is documented now, there were, I preached, and on one side they had, um, well, everybody else was out front, and we gave an altar call, and a lot of people come down, a lot. And on the other side was all the HIV patients, and they, because they had to sit separate, and they had little papers that said HIV and everybody avoided them. And so, and it was really hot. And so uh, the pastor said, would you, do you want to talk to the people that got saved or do you want to go minister to the sick? I'm like, you're the pastor. You're going to have to deal with the saved. You go deal with them. I'll go to the sick. And so I walk over and jump off the platform a little bit and wade into these people. 
and they just surround me and they're grabbing me and I'm laying hands and I'm hot, I'm sweating, they're hot and sweating and they're grabbing me and they're kissing my hand, they're kissing my cheek, they're hugging me. Why? Because nobody would have anything to do with them. But I walked in the middle of them because two reasons. Well, I need to show them that I wasn't afraid of what they had. And I need to show the devil that I ain't afraid of him either. And so I waited in the middle of them and they're handing me babies that are burning up with fever because the babies have HIV. And so I'm holding the baby and praying for people and loving the baby. I don't even remember praying for the babies really so much as holding them. And so we went through all these people. When we got done, I'm soaking wet more with their sweat than mine. And we go back into the office and then um, he tells me, now when you start to leave South Africa, come back by here and preach again on your way out. And I'm like, done, we'll do it. So about three weeks, three weeks later, we go back over and he pulls me back into his office and he says, you see this? And he shows me a stack of papers. He said, 300 HIV healed in that service. 300. And, and I'm, I'm amazed, but not surprised. You know, I mean, we've, but, but that was a bit, we've never seen a number like that of that, but we've seen all kinds of stuff. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because I want you to realize, I want you to get a bigger picture of God. A couple of years ago, I was in, here in America, and it's funny because I use translators more here in America than I do anywhere else. Kind of strange, especially nowadays. And so I was in a church up in uh, Portland, uh, well, Vancouver, Washington, actually right across the river from Portland, Oregon. And I was in a Russian church, and they didn't speak English, and I don't speak Russian. And so I preached. I had a translator. When I got done, we were going to pray for the people. So I called the people, and the translator called the people, and then they called him away. So he disappeared. So I'm kind of, all the people are down here, and I'm like, what, what do I do? I mean, I, I don't know how to speak Russian. And I, and I asked him, I said, where's my translator? Oh, he won't be coming back. He had to take somebody. I'm like, that would have been good to know. And so I just climbed down off the platform. And the people, there was no line. There was nothing like that, right? There was just people, just crowd, crowd of people. And as I got down, they just crowded in. And now listen, they would come up, and I didn't know what they had. I couldn't even ask them because they couldn't answer me. And so I just started laying hands or taking them by the hands and be healed. Life, life in Jesus, be healed, be healed, be healed. I did not know one thing I prayed for, not one thing. And (laughs) went home that night or went to the uh, hotel that night. Next morning, which was a Sunday, they brought me back over. The pastor gets up, and he says, and speaks to him in Russian, but I have a translator now and a thing in my ear that I can hear what you're saying. And he said, if you were healed last night, come down front, give your testimony. It looked like the whole church was coming down front. He stopped him and goes, no, 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 you misunderstood. I didn't say if you were prayed for. I said if you were healed. And the people were like, yeah, and came right on down. And so now that the rest of the, I didn't even get to preach. The rest of the service was just them giving testimony. Amen. Tumors disappeared. Cataracts disappeared. Arthritis. I mean, you name it. And I didn't know one thing I prayed for. But let me tell you, that day, God got bigger in my eyesight. Because yes. I realized he's just looking for an opportunity. 